My ex is from Pittsburgh, and the first time I went, I was like, you know, like when you're like young, like 20 year old, you're like, I'm gonna be the parents. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm gonna be real dainty June. And I ordered a salad <laughs> at the Eaton Park, and that salad came, it was like a few pieces of lettuce with a pile of french fries on top and like this carafe of ranch dressing. Oh and I was like, my God. where? Are we? And it is Pittsburgh. A salad is always a plate of, a yes. plate of fries so to me. So you tell the great folks of Pittsburgh, I, I love will. their goddamn salads. Hello, America. I'm your host, Marty Gold Cummings, and welcome to the Marty Report. In 2018, Malcolm Kenyatta made history as the first openly gay black man elected to state office in Pennsylvania, representing the 181st district in the Pennsylvania General Assembly. Representative Kenyatta, welcome to the show. Let's dive right into the deep end. Yes, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Your election in 2018, yeah. you made history. You were the first yeah. openly gay black man elected to state office in Pennsylvania. How does that feel, being a history maker? You know, so a big part of it, right? You say, wow, that is history. But then the question is, why has it taken so long? Why am I the only one? And so my hope is that people don't look and say, oh wow, Malcolm made history, but there's somebody who looks and says, you know what, I can actually do that too. And so that's what we hope um, every time somebody steps up and does something courageous. Um, I think it inspires other people to be courageous. I think it's so, kind of crazy that in 2018, 2019, 2020, mm -hmm. we're still having that conversation of first this, first that elected into yep. office. But it is, like you said, like it's so important, the representation. Uh, so now somebody else might feel they can be a part of the process for the first time. And also maybe. marginalized folks make better policy, right? When you know what it feels like to be treated unfairly simply because of who you are, or, you know, who you, who you love or, you know, what your religious background is, or if you don't believe in any God at all, to be treated unfairly simply because of that. I think you bring that perspective, hopefully, to everything that you do. I look at all policy through that lens. You know, I grew up a poor black gay kid from North Philly. So, you know, I bring that into every room that I go into, and not only, you know, am I thinking about the margins, but also we're then being actually representative of what the state looks like, what the city looks like, wherever folks are showing up as their full authentic self. Yeah, you're able to make legislation based mm -hmm. on your experience, yeah. which is so, yeah. that's why representation matters. Yep. It's so important. And I wanna ask, as an openly uh, queer public official, elected official, were you ever told to turn it down or hide your queerness in politics? Oh yeah, so when, my, so when I ran, I had this company called Seven, Seven Knots Productions who like did my launch video. Mm -hmm. And in the video, you know, I mentioned that I'm, that I'm gay and I like showed it to some folks who were, you know, super su supportive before I decided to run. And they were like, so this is a cute little video, but there's a couple of edits you're gonna have to make and some stuff that you're gonna have to take out. I didn't wanna be elected and have to have some false other version of, of myself. I wanted to win or lose as myself, and we won in a landslide. And I think because we did the work, we talked about things that mattered. What were your major platform issues in your elections, and do any of them uh, map out on the upcoming general election? I think so, so certainly deep, deep poverty, I think anyone who's gonna run for office anywhere ought to be talking about that and not just like the middle the middle class. The other thing is this epidemic of, of gun violence and it is not just the homicides that we so often talk about, but there really is a crisis in this, in this country of folks who feel desperate and alone, who are dying by suicide at record levels and guns are you know, also the number one way um, that folks are, are, are choosing to no longer be with us. And so in Harrisburg, every day I'm talking about mental health, I'm talking about gun violence, and I actually have a bill called Phillips Law to really honor this young man, 11 years old, was being bullied ruthlessly in school. His little brother was being bullied because folks perceived his little brother as gay. Um, and 11 years old, went home, took his own life. And so I have a bill called Phillips Law, 73 co-sponsors, bipartisan, to look at A, how many mental health professionals we actually have in our schools, mm -hmm. and then B, mandate a ratio to make sure that in our schools we're not just teaching our kids, but we're holistically supporting them. Yeah, I'm not sure the exact statistic, but I was reading this article the other day about how there are more schools with, um, uh, 
like I mean, every school like needs security, obviously, but mm -hmm. there's more schools with police than there are schools with uh, mental health professionals and social yep. workers to help yep. kids who are either being bullied or the, maybe there's issues at home or, you know, also classroom sizes are, are far too big and teachers may not be able to like hone in on, on things that are happening. Yeah, I mean, we only have, you know, in Philadelphia, we were just, I was just at a rally the other day. We don't have librarians, okay? Seven librarians for all of Philadelphia schools, seven. Seven? Seven. So if you're a librarian and you want to come work with us, my mom is a school librarian. Tell your mom she, to come. come she, she can teach commute. These kids. She can commute to Philly. <laughs> so in your first 100 mm -hmm. days, uh, what needs to happen when the next president is elected? Whether it's uh, one of the Democrats who's running yeah. or um, President Trump, what is your vision for that first 100 days? So the second part of that question, I will now acknowledge. For the first <laughs> part of the question, I think the next president has a big job ahead of them. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's critically important that we pick someone that understands um, the weight of the task that's gonna be in front of them. But if I had to pick one thing, and it's almost impossible, but I, I will pick this one thing because it's, I think it's the core of everything else. We have a climate crisis right now. I mean, it is a crisis. I feel like nobody's talking about it. We need to be talking about it every single day. It is a crisis. And it's also a justice issue. Let's be very, very clear that the climate crisis is not now and will not be felt equally. It is the communities where folks are already struggling to get by, where they put that waste disposal mm -hmm. um, facility. It's that community where kids are having asthma attacks that's leading to hospitalizations. It's those communities, if, they, if there is a, you know, a, a major flood or some other you know, weather event that causes folks to lose their housing, they're gonna be the last ones who are able to rebuild. And so we have to be very clear-eyed about what is happening right now. As far as I'm aware, there is no planet B, um, <laughs> but I'm not going anywhere. And so we have to, we really do have to fix this. It's deeply serious. And you know, I'm just so grateful to all the young people who are taking this issue up and who are recognizing that their very lives, you know, are, are at stake. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's a very real thing, you know, like the, 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 the generation right below ours, mm -hmm. they're, kids could be like the last and that sounds drastic but it's a very serious matter it, it is and drastic and we have a president right now who is rolling back all well, the they regulations care more about right? money and, they and do. lining their pockets but what good does that do you when we're all extinct uh exactly mm, you get it uh, i get it i'm with you i'm with you all right now we're going to do a speed round of I questions love it. Let's do it. so if you were running for president what would your campaign theme song be jasmine sullivan if you dare Jasmine Sullivan is the most oh. underrated. I bust the windows out your car. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. she, yes. Okay. You ha have you seen the video of Jasmine Sullivan when she's like 12 years old singing home? From um, yeah. Have I like seen it like yeah, a thousand that's times? That's your homework. Uh, and and from Philly. So she's like, from Philly? Of course she she's is. She's so underrated and so talented. She so is. good. I want. And so if I ever like decide to make a horrible decision and run for president, oh um, I will take that song with me everywhere. So uh, politics can be completely overwhelming, mm -hmm. not just a news cycle, but I imagine also making yep. legislation for, oh, no. for your state and your community. So what is your retreat when it gets too overwhelming? Stand-up comedy. I love to it. To see it or do it? To see it, and if I do, do if I have done it, all the, all the videos, you will never find them. But no, I, I really like to, to see it. Um, I love to laugh. I just think if you're not like, what's the, what's the point? You go to you go to like stand up shows. I stand up shows. I'll watch it. I'll listen to albums. I just love laughing, and so any chance I get, I'm like listening to stand up. Who are some activists or leaders that you look to for guidance? So most of the folks I'm thinking about are no longer with us, but still their legacy is something I try to use as a as a north star. Always my grandfather, Muhammad Kenyatta, he was a great um, activist. He ran for mayor of Philadelphia in 75, and he's somebody who consistently I look up to and I'm you know, praying every day that I'm you know, making him proud. Um, also, also James Baldwin, you know, mm. James has so many great, great books, but Native Son was like literally the first book I ever read all the way through. And it was the first book like my dad gave me, like that was such a hard like book to like give to <laughs> like a kid, like read this. Um, but his 
ability to talk about America from this place of deep pain, but also of, of deep love, I think is how a lot of us feel. Um, Cory Booker had this thing that he says all the time, and he might not be the first to say it, but that if America hasn't broken your heart, you don't love her enough. And America has over and over again, you know, broken my heart, but there's no other country where I'd rather be doing this incredibly important work. Was there a moment in your life that inspired you to get involved? So I had the great privilege of having like a strong black mama. Everybody should have one, but <laughs> I, had, I had the best one. And so we were living on this, this block in, in, my, in my now district. And I was like saying to her, I was like 11, I'm like, you know, well, mom, there's this issue on the block, that issue on the block, you know, whatever it was. And she was like, well, if you care so much, go do something about it. And I was like, oh, okay. And so I like, <laughs> so I like ran for junior block captain. That was the first thing I ever did in terms of, you know, being involved. And it's why I talk at so much. At 11 years old. At 11 years old. All right, we'd like to close out our show with a little bit of what's on your mind. So your choice, you can pick a hope, something that gives you inspiration, or a nope, something that you hope you never see or hear about again. My nope is Donald Trump. I don't want to hear about him again. And I want us to get to the important business of making America what the hell it should be. Very good. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much for joining me today, Representative Kenyatta. And uh, before we leave, where can America find you? At Malcolm Kenyatta on Twitter, on Instagram, and don't try to find my Facebook. Yeah, don't, don't get on the <laughs> Facebook, but, but check out Twitter and Instagram. Uh, thank you so thank much you for, so much. This was for wonderful. being here. Listen up, America. We want to hear from you. You can tweet to us at Logo TV and use the hashtag Marty Report or comment below and tell us what election topics you would like us to tackle. Please subscribe to Logo's YouTube and join us next time for another scintillating round of hot politics on the Marty Report.